Is a $5 adjustable wrench just as good as one that costs over $50? These wrenches are known for rounding off nuts and bolts, but is it possible that a really good one is just as good as an open-end wrench? Well, let's find out. In the first test, we'll see which wrenches back off when they experience movement. Then we'll see if a vintage USA Craftsman wrench offers better holding power on a nut than an imported Craftsman and 15 other brands. Then we'll see which wrench is the strongest. All the adjustable wrenches we'll be testing are 10 inches in length. At an absolutely terrific price at only $5 is this Navigando brand. Handles nuts and bolts up to an inch and a quarter. Includes both SAE as well as metric markings. Precision machine slide jaw and worm gear allows for a fast fit and smooth adjustment. Forged and heat treated number 45 carbon steel. The Navigando is made in China. The Navigando weighs 426 grams. Adjustable wrenches with poor fit and finish destroy nuts and bolts. The Navigando has 1.63 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.053 millimeters of side to side travel, which seems about right for a $5 tool. A wrench with a lot of slop will self adjust and back off with movement or vibration. So let's see how much each wrench backs off when they experience vibration from a compact impact wrench for a fraction of a second. I'll tape the wrench to the test jig to keep it centered on the bolt. And the Navigando's jaw opened up 8.5 millimeters. Slowing things down a bit, the worm gear backed off very quickly as the excessive jaw movement sent the worm gear spinning. At a price of only $6, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is made by Pittsburgh and sold at Harbor Freight. Made of forged steel. The Pittsburgh is made in China. The Pittsburgh is a little bit lighter than the Navigando at 422 grams. And the Pittsburgh has even more up and down travel than the Navigando at 2.1 millimeters and 0.66 millimeters from side to side. The worm gear seems to grind quite a bit as it turns, which really helped keep the worm gear from backing off 1.57 millimeters. At a price of $27 for three wrenches or $9 each is this Cobalt brand. Drop Forge Chrome Vanadium Steel for strength and durability. Includes metric and SAE markings on the jaw. Works with both standard and metric fasteners. Up to one and three eighths inch. The Cobalt is made in China. The Cobalt is the heaviest yet at 500 grams. And the Cobalt has 1.85 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.3 millimeters of side to side slop. And the Cobalt performed much better than the Navigando and the Pittsburgh with the jaws opening up 0.97 millimeters. At a price of $14 is this Tecton brand. Precision machine slide jaw and worm gear allows for exact fastener fit. Laser etched side markings in 1 16th of an inch or one millimeter increments. The Tecton is made in China. The Tecton is the lightest jet at 416 grams. And the Tecton has the least amount of up and down jaw travel at 0.93 millimeters and 0.25 millimeters of side to side travel. And the Tecton jaws opened up 0.65 millimeters to move into the lead. At a price of $16 is this Crescent brand. Wider handle for more torque. Larger neural for easier adjustment and tighter jaw fit. Hex jaw design reduces slippage and tightly grips bolt. We're gonna test that. Heat treated forged alloy steel for toughness and durability. Laser etched scale. It even includes an arrow for direction of use. One and three eighths inch jaw capacity. The Crescent brand is made in China. The Crescent brand weighs 491 grams. And the Crescent has 1.17 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.3 millimeters of side to side travel. And the Crescent did well, only opening up 1.02 millimeters, about the same as the Cobalt. Also at a price of $16 is this Craftsman brand. One and three eighths inch jaw capacity. Includes both metric and SAE scale. The Craftsman is made in China. The Craftsman is made in China is the heaviest yet at 508 grams. The Craftsman has 1.11 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.18 millimeters of side to side. And the Craftsman performed about the same as the Crescent at 1.16 millimeters. Are USA made Craftsman tools better than those made in China? We're gonna find out. I bought this wrench on eBay, it's advertised as new, and from the looks of it, it's never been used. Forged in USA. The Craftsman wrench on the left is made in China, the one on the right is made in USA. The wrench made in China is a little bit longer and has a bigger handle. The Craftsman made in China also has a wider jaw opening. The USA made Craftsman is the lightest yet at 413 grams. The vintage made USA Craftsman has far less slop than the other brands at only 0.64 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.18 millimeters side to side. And the Craftsman performed by far the best yet at only 0.35 millimeters, very impressive. Also the price of $16, the same price as the Craftsman and the Craftsman is this Irwin brand. Machine jaws for maximum gripping strength, made of chrome vanadium steel, one and one eighth inch jaw capacity. Pro touch grip provides maximum torque and comfort. The Irwin is made in China. The Irwin weighs 447 grams. The Irwin vice grips have 1.27 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.18 side to side. And the Irwin didn't quite perform as well as a Craftsman at 1.44 millimeters.
At a price of $21 is this channel lock brand. Jaw capacity, 1 in 13 30 seconds of an inch. Longer jaws that grip better, avoiding slippage or nut round off. Four thread neural. Measurement scales for SAE as well as metric. Thinner jaws for greater access and tight spaces. Precision jaw design grips tight the first time. The channel lock is made in Spain. The channel lock is the lightest yet at 411 grams. And the channel lock has pretty good fit and finish at 0.88 millimeters up and down slop and only 0.6 side to side. And the channel locks perform nearly the same as the vintage Craftsman at 0.51 millimeters. At a price of $24 is this Reed Manufacturing Company brand. Large serrated neural for smooth, easy jaw adjustment. Handle is up to 70% wider for more comfort and less hand fatigue. Hex jaw design allows for more secure fit. The Reed does not have size markings on the tool. The Reed brand is made in Spain. The Reed is really light at only 370 grams. Just like the channel lock, the Reed wrench has really good fit and finish at only 0.8 millimeters up and down slop and 0.6 side to side. Just like the channel lock, the Reed wrench performed very well, only giving up 0.71 millimeters. At a price of $33 is this Klein Tools brand. The neural turns smoothly for easy operation. Contoured handles for comfortable use. Precision machine jaws are individually chosen and assembled by hand for smooth operation. High polished chrome finish is rust resistant. Made in Spain. The Klein Tools weighs 433 grams. Klein Tools has a little bit more up and down slop than the channel lock at 1.16 millimeters and 0.1 side to side. And the Klein Tools wrench gave up 1.2 millimeters. Also at a price of $33, the same price as the Klein Tools is this Milwaukee brand. Accurate size adjustment. Won't dig into the palm. Laser etch ruler for easy to read. Proprietary adjustment screw. Jaws won't back off. We're going to test that. Parallel jaws won't slip or damage the finish surfaces. The Milwaukee is made in Taiwan. The Milwaukee weighs 491 grams. The Milwaukee has a six thread neural and the Milwaukee only has 0.71 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.13 side to side. Milwaukee claims their wrench won't back off and the Milwaukee moves into first place only giving up 0.27 millimeters. Very impressive. At a price of $38 is this Godore brand. Swedish pattern roller with left hand thread. It has a striking face to allow for light blows. The jaw set is at 15 degrees. Includes a metric scale. The Godore brand is made in Germany. The Godore is the heaviest yet at 510 grams. The Godore has 1.16 millimeters of up and down slop and 0.2 side to side. And the Godore performed well, only giving up 0.69 millimeters. At a price of $53 is this Baco brand. Extra wide jaw opening jaws with shorter handle. Precision hardened and anti-corrosion treated. Slim head with tapered jaws. Includes a measurement scale on the head of the tool. Designed for maximum access in confined areas. The Baco is made in Spain. The Baco is by far the heaviest at 643 grams. The Baco only has 0.62 millimeters of up and down travel and 0.25 side to side. And the terrific fit and finish really helped the Baco move into second place, only giving up 0.3 millimeters. At a price of $58, is this Hazit brand. Laser etch ruler for easy to read. While it's not stamped on the tool, I believe the Hazit is made in Germany. Milling data is transmitted directly to a high-speed milling machine. Spindle mills forge the contours with high precision at 42,000 RPM. The Hazit weighs 438 grams. The Hazit has 0.98 millimeters up and down slop and 0.15 side to side. And the Hazit performed very well moving into fourth place behind the USA made Craftsman at 0.38 millimeters. At a price of $200 for four of these wrenches or $50 each, is this Weir a Joker? It takes four of these wrenches to achieve the same size adjustments as a traditional adjustable wrench. The smallest wrench is from 13 to 16 millimeters, then 16 to 19 millimeters, 19 to 24, and 24 to 32. Simply lift up the head to open the jaws. Automatically adjust to the proper size. Ratchet function ensures a fast and consistent grip. The Weirer brand is made in Germany. Weirer Joker that's very close to the same length as the other brands is 379 grams. So the Milwaukee came in on top, only giving up 0.27 millimeters. The Baco also performed very well at 0.3 millimeters. USA made Craftsman 0.35, has it 0.38, and channel lock 0.51 millimeters. Tool weight's probably going to be a factor in the next test, with the Baco weighing the most at 643 grams. The Ghidorah is pretty heavy at 510 grams. The imported Craftsman 508, Cobalt 500, and Milwaukee and Crescent 491 grams. Now for the most important test. Let's see how much torque each wrench can handle before it rounds off a nut. The bolt passing through the tester will move freely. I'll move the handles while tightening the worm gear to move all the slack between the wrench and the bolt. Once the wrench is in place, I'll be using a torque adapter and a breaker bar to apply force until the wrench loses grip. I'll replace the nut with a new one between testing each wrench. To serve as our control, let's test a USA made Craftsman wrench first. The three quarter inch Craftsman wrench is quite a bit narrower than the adjustable wrenches and there's a small gap between the jaws and the nut. 129.6 inch pounds is the number to beat.
Unlike the wrench, I'm able to tighten the worm gear to press the upper and the lower jaws tight up against the nut. And the Navigando is off to a pretty good start at 120.8 foot-pounds. And there's quite a bit of movement with the worm gear and the jaws on the Pittsburgh. 105.2 foot-pounds or 15 foot-pounds less than the Navigando. And the jaws on the Cobalt and the worm gear experienced a small amount of movement and finally let go at 113.3 foot-pounds to move into the second place position. And the Tecton has a lot less wobble than the Navigando, Pittsburgh, and the Cobalt, and it refused to give up. Very little movement in the worm gear and jaws. And the Tecton finally gave up at 146.2 foot-pounds. The Crescent brand definitely knows something about adjustable wrenches, and the jaws and the worm gear did a terrific job of staying in position. And the wrench finally let go at 149.9 foot-pounds to move into first place. And the Craftsman brand, which is one of the heaviest wrenches tested, made it to 136.2 foot-pounds before giving up. So the Craftsman moves into third place behind the Tecton brand. And the USA-made Craftsman worm gear and jaws are built like a tank and refuse to flex or buckle under pressure. And the camera just barely caught the torque reading before the half-inch grade 8 bolt finally snapped at 184.4 foot-pounds. Very impressive! While the Craftsman didn't completely slip, there's still some damage to the nut. And the Irwin has quite a bit of jaw wobble at 1.27 millimeters, and it really hurt the performance in this test. And there's quite a bit of visible jaw stretching as the torque is applied. And the Irwin gave up at only 103.5 foot-pounds. While the channel lock has very little slop, unfortunately the adjustable jaw just doesn't seem to have a lot of strength. As the torque is applied, there's quite a bit of visible jaw stretching, and the wrench gave up at 105.8 foot-pounds. As the torque is applied, the adjustable screw appears to be backing off very slightly, and the reed finished at 123.5 foot-pounds. While the Klein Tools wrench did have a little bit more up and down slop than some of the other brands, the jaws and the worm gear seem quite a bit more robust than some of the other brands. And the Klein Tools brand performed well at 147.1 foot-pounds. The six neural worm gear on the Milwaukee didn't seem to move during the test. However, the jaw stretch is pretty noticeable, and the wrench performed slightly better than average at 134.3 foot-pounds. The Godore had 1.16 millimeters of up and down slop, and that seems to have been a factor in how it performed in this test. And the Godore gave up at 131.6 foot-pounds, about the same as the Milwaukee. The Baco is very large and has very little slop in the worm gear and the adjustable jaw. However, there is quite a bit of jaw stretch, and the Baco gave up at 132.9 foot-pounds, about the same as the Milwaukee in the Godore. There's nearly a millimeter of up and down slop with the Hazit, and that seems to have been a factor in how it performed. As the torque is applied, the worm gear and the adjustable jaw began stretching. 125.2 foot-pounds. And the Weird Joker has a very unique design that applies proportionally more squeeze on the fastener as torque is applied to the handle. Unfortunately, the wrench suddenly flew off the tester and that caused the torque adapter to suddenly power down. The torque reading was not stored in memory, but it does appear that the torque peaked at 167 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, the wrench broke during the test. So let's test a smaller Weirer, which will also work with a 3 quarter inch nut. And the Weirer Joker made it to 163.7 foot-pounds before the wrench finally began to lose grip. Unlike the larger wrench, the smaller wrench held up just fine. So the Vintage Craftsman came out on top at 184.4 pounds before the bolt broke. The smaller of the two Weirer Joker wrenches also performed very well at 163.7 foot-pounds, Crescent 149.9, Klein Tools 147.1, and Tecton 146.2 foot-pounds. A wrench that has perfectly parallel jaw will make more surface area contact with the nut or a bolt than a wrench that's not evenly aligned. Using this aluminum flat stock, I applied up and down handle movement while tightening the worm gear to remove all of the slop. Unfortunately, the Navigando jaws just aren't very parallel, and there's a 0.045 millimeter gap between the wrench and the metal. Unlike the Navigando, the gap this time is on the inner side of the jaws. With the worm gear tightened snugly, the Pittsburgh wrench has an even larger gap than the Navigando wrench at 0.5 millimeters. After measuring the no-load gap on all the brands, the channel lock and Klein tools came out on top at 0.8 millimeters, but the reed wrench performed nearly as well at 0.1. Craftsman USA 0.13, Baku and Hazit 0.18 millimeters. I put together this next tester to measure the quality and performance of the wrenches under load. The steel plate across the top is made of AR500 to prevent the tester from bending or breaking. We've already measured the no-load gap, so let's apply 200 pounds of load and measure the gap again. I'll use a hydraulic press to apply the load beginning with the Navigando. Without a load, the Navigando had a gap of 0.45 millimeters. With a load, the gap on the jaws of the Navigando and the steel plate more than doubled to just over one millimeter. With around 200 pounds on the end of the handle, the size of the gap with the Pittsburgh is 1.1 millimeters. And the Cobalt has a no-load gap of 0.33 millimeters, and the size of the gap more than doubled with 200 pounds of weight on the end of the wrench. And the Cobalt performs slightly better than the Navigando at 0.88 millimeters. And the Tecton has a no-load gap of 0.25 millimeters, and that tripled to 0.76 millimeters under load. So the Tecton does have the smallest gap and takes the lead from Cobalt. 
And the Crescent brand performed very well in the testing leading up to this point, and it performed very well in this test too, with the smallest gap yet at 0.58 millimeters. And the imported Craftsman's build quality is pretty good, but not quite as good as the Crescent brand. And the Craftsman left a gap at 0.7 millimeters. With very short jaws from front to back, the USA made Craftsman is at a leverage disadvantage. And the USA made Craftsman overcame the leverage disadvantage and moves into first place over the Crescent with the smallest gap yet at 0.55 millimeters. Unfortunately, the vice grip wrench really struggled and rounded off the nut at only 103.5 foot-pounds, and it struggled in this test too at 0.75 millimeters. Unfortunately, the no-load gap grew by tenfold from 0.07 to 0.7 millimeters for the channel lock. Just like the vintage Craftsman, the reed has very short jaws, putting it at a leverage disadvantage. Even so, it performed just as well as some of the wrenches with longer jaws at 0.7 millimeters. The Klein tools performed very well and didn't slip and round off the nut until 147 foot-pounds, and it performed very well in this test too, with the second smallest gap yet at only 0.65 millimeters. And the Milwaukee had a no-load gap of 0.35 millimeters, and the gap size doubled under load to 0.75 millimeters, which is very close to average. The Ghidor has a no-load jaw gap of 0.25 millimeters, and the gap size just about tripled to 0.7 millimeters under load. The Baco has the longest jaws, and that really helped it in this test. With a gap of only 0.58 millimeters, the Baco tied to Crescent for second place. The Hazit has a no-load gap of only 0.17 millimeters, and it performed nearly as well as the Baco at 0.6 millimeters with a 200-pound load. Under the weight of 200 pounds, the wrench making the most contact with the nut is the Vintage Craftsman with a gap of 0.55 millimeters. However, the Crescent and the Baku perform nearly as well at 0.58 millimeters, has it 0.6, incline 0.65 millimeters. Unfortunately, I've broken a lot of tools by pushing them past their limits. If you use an adjustable wrench to apply leverage to flat or square stock, we'll see how much pressure they can handle. For safety reasons, I'll be securing the wrench to the press and wearing a lot of protective equipment. Jaw length and build quality has a huge impact on performance. And the Navagondo has a leverage advantage with longer jaws than average, making it all the way to 750 pounds before the adjustable jaw broke off. Throughout the entire test of the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh, there's quite a bit of visible jaw stretching that took place. And the Pittsburgh made it to around 600 pounds before giving up. The Cobalt has quite a bit longer jaws than most of the other brands, and that really helped it perform well in this test, finally coming apart at 940 pounds. The Tecton performed fairly well throughout the testing, but the short jaws really put it at a big disadvantage, and the Tecton gave up at 581 pounds. Just like the Tecton, the Crescent has pretty short jaws, but it still performed very well, and the jaw finally snapped at 775 pounds. And the Craftsman's long jaws give it a leverage advantage over the Crescent. However, the Craftsman gave up at around 656 pounds, or about 120 pounds less than the Crescent. The USA-made Craftsman has much shorter jaws than most of the other brands, putting it at a big disadvantage. Even with the leverage disadvantage, the Craftsman still performed well at 634 pounds. The Irwin with the second longest jaws in the lineup really benefited from the leverage advantage and moves into the lead at 1,179 pounds. Very impressive. And the jaw length on the channel locks is very close to the same as the imported Craftsman, and it gave up 10 pounds less at 646 pounds. Even though the reed has very short jaws, it performed very well reaching 687 pounds before busting loose and taking flight. The jaws and the Klein Tools wrench are shorter than average, but it still put up an above average number at 731 pounds. And the Milwaukee weighs nearly 500 grams, and the jaws are longer than average, which really helped it perform well in this test. The worm gear is frozen, and the top and lower jaws have some pretty bad bends. The Ghidorah's jaw length is very close to the same as the Milwaukee's, and it performed very well, making it to 961 pounds before snapping. And the Baco has a 7mm jaw length advantage over all the other brands. And the Baco refused to give up, but finally came apart at 1,330. 34 pounds. Very impressive. The Hazus jaws are slightly shorter than average, but it still performed better than average at 861 pounds. So if you're looking for a wrench that can handle the most torque for flat or square metal, the Baco came out on top at 1,334 pounds. The Irwin also performed very well at 1,179 pounds, Ghidor 961, Cobalt 940, and Milwaukee 907 pounds. And the wrench that performed by far the best in this showdown is definitely the Vintage Craftsman made in USA, but unfortunately, the that wrench is no longer sold. So if I had to choose a wrench for under $20, I would definitely go with the Crescent brand. It performed extremely well. If you're willing to spend a little bit more money, why not just go ahead and get the Klein Tools? It too performed very well. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.